the cancer resurfaced again when I was about 30 years old. And um, I decided that I was just not going to live through it again because it was very painful. So I ate the raw meat to kill myself. And it did just the opposite. It invigorated me for the first time in my life. They say, what do you think about the raw diet? And I go, oh, I love the raw diet. The raw diet is a fabulous diet. All of our ancestors ate that way. And they were super healthy. Raw fish, raw beef, raw eggs, raw milk. And they're going, ah, uh, because that's not what they had anything. <laughs> they as farthest from what they were saying as possible. Believe me, believe me, you know, when she said, I want to try raw meat, <laughs> I, you know, I went all the way, okay. You know, oh, yeah. you're desperate, but I, you know, mm. I was reluctant to even tell him mm -hmm. that I was going to do it. Mm -hmm. uh, but <laughs> <laughs> after about um, two weeks, I could see uh, a tremendous change. And so you're eating literally raw meat. This is raw chicken. Correct. And you're just eating that. Correct. And where are you getting do the you chicken? you eat it right off the bone like that? Well, I can eat it right off the bone. Would you like to see? Oh. <laughs> but raw is a good way to eat things as long as you don't pull out a whole section of our foods that are necessary to be healthy. I mean, I eat raw eggs in my smoothie many days of the week. I eat uh, six to eight quarts uh, of raw milk. Uh, I uh, try to cook my uh, beef and lamb and everything very, very rare because I happen to like the flavor a little better if it's cooked, but it's rare or medium rare. Uh, I eat sashimi, you know, which is raw, ceviche, which is raw, uh, carpaccio, which is raw. These are all traditional foods eaten around the world. Nobody ever gets sick eating those. Mm -hmm. I'm supposed to be deathly ill from eating anything raw, and here I'm eating raw meat for 13 years, and I've never gotten diarrhea or vomit from it, mm -hmm. ever. Mm -hmm. You know, this doesn't make sense. So I went to the main medical universities looking for the experiments that prove the raw meat gives parasites, and there wasn't one. Yeah, we hear it was all salmonella, myth. bacterial poisoning, where everyone's yeah. afraid of raw eggs, raw milk. Oh, you're going to get sick and die. The stats are something quite different. I mean, most of the salmonella poisoning that takes place is from cooked foods. Like Absolutely. what, nine, 95, 96 percent? 99.999 percent. It's all from cooked food. There's bacteria in all of this. To fear these is a problem. When you pasteurize or cook something and the bacteria feeds on it thin, you have a toxic byproduct. That's why two years ago at Davis uh, University in uh, Northern California, they took raw milk and they spiked it with five different bacteria that are accused of growing in raw milk. Since the lactic acid is raw, the bacteria could not grow. It could not flourish. However, when they spiked pasteurized milk, it grew in an instant. And that was dangerous. So raw milk, raw meat or not, when you cook them and then the bacteria feeds on it, there are toxic byproducts. Otherwise, so, they help you. Do you ever recommend or accept raw meats and raw fish into the diet? Absolutely. They're very easy to digest. They're lovely. So are, are raw meats, I, I was told raw meats are easier to digest than they cooked are. meats. So the, the gap diet is more um, for compromise. You see, Mediterraneans, they eat a lot of meat, but they eat it beef in particular. If they cook beef, they either just singe it on the outside and it's bloody inside, right. completely raw, just literally slightly singed on the edges, or they cook it thoroughly for many hours. And they so would never roast beef the way English do it, so it becomes like... A, Cardboard. <laughs> I would never do anything like that. It's either raw or well cooked as a stew. And I find it fascinating that uh, in Europe, every country in Europe has at least one typical raw meat dish that's consumed uh, at least occasionally. But one thing we do know that all cultures had some of their animal foods raw. So we think of sushi, we think of the Eskimo with their raw food. Now, we don't know all the reasons why raw animal foods are so important, but one of them has to do with vitamin B6. Vitamin B6 is um, much higher in animal foods. It's a fragile vitamin and easily destroyed by heat. I'm getting hungry. Go for it. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, no, this is really good. Yeah, watch. Well, like, he would, you know, put eggs in two different categories depending upon how they were cooked. If they were raw, they were mildly acidifying or neutral, and if they were cooked, even, even to the, the edge of being slightly alkalinizing, but if they were cooked, they were definitely acid, massively acid forming. And 
on, on looking at it from an inflammatory point of view, eggs go from being pretty much non-inflammatory when they're raw to being highly inflammatory when they're cooked. And she says, I have an emphysemic patient who was diagnosed seven years ago. She's been bedridden for almost two years. She's on the machines for two years. She's going to die this weekend. What can I do? Somebody calling me a little late, aren't you? Yeah. So I said, what you need to do is get her 10 to 15 dozen raw eggs, put them at her bedside, and let her eat as many as she can. And there's no limit. You mean raw? Raw, of course. So, um... I got a call on Monday morning from this raspy voice woman saying, it worked, I'm out of bed, what should I do? And I said, well, who are you? And she said, well, my doctor told you I had emphysema, I was on machines, I was supposed to die this weekend, uh, I ate all the eggs you recommended, I'm out of bed and off the machines, what do I do now? I said, keep eating eggs, but how many did it take? She said, well, I ate 33 on Saturday and 33 on Sunday. And she said, I'm off the machines, out of bed. Eggs are so vital. If the yolk is hard, you have the fats in the egg yolk are beginning to go rancid by the cooking process. So you're being exposed to rancid fats, which are mutagens, carcinogens, and teratogens. And they suppress immune system activity. Dr. Francis Marion Pottinger, Jr. was a medical doctor who was best known for his famous 10-year nutritional feeding study that he carried out with many hundreds of cats. The cats were divided into different groups where they were fed either cooked or raw animal-based foods, such as cooked meat versus raw meat, uh, cooked or rather pasteurized dairy versus raw dairy. Um, and the study describes in detail all of the physical and emotional problems which developed in the cooked diet animals, but never occurred in those on the healthy raw foods. The cooked diet cats never even got past the third generation, since they lost fertility and the ability to reproduce. Just as today, we have more and more clinics specializing in using drugs to help people who have become unable to give birth to children. Uh, yes. Wherever we could, everything. Yes. People say, try this, try that, try this, try, try this juice, try that. Nothing more. That's right. So um, I, I read the book. I decided I would just do the, the raw meat, and I continued eating my regular diet, just uh, changed the cooked meat to raw meat, and I could see a change the next day. I could see that things felt better the next I day. I found that 30% raw and 70% cooked uh, didn't fly. <laughs> it wouldn't maintain health. But 50-50, uh, he still felt you could get along. Those cats fed on a 100% raw diet thrived. The third generation looked just as healthy as the first generation. And when somebody posts this finding on the, you know, the, the massive headlines that eating eggs is as dangerous as smoking cigarettes, I ask the question, are they talking about cooked eggs? And it makes perfect sense to me that they would. When you're talking about an inflammatory insult to the human body, in a society that has uh, endemic inflammation, I can see how this would be a serious problem and that this is not a smart thing to do and it's something that I don't do. I don't eat hard boiled eggs anymore. I'm confused because every day I hear on the radio or I read in the paper that I'm supposed to, you know, I should be moving towards a vegetarian yeah, diet. I would say you need to completely ignore everything you hear on the radio and read the papers because it's wrong and whatever comes out of the government is wrong. These people are really acting as the marketing arms for the veg vegetable oil industry and the food processing industry. Control of people. Mm -hmm. So how do you keep control of people? You keep them procreating, keep them in credit, and you keep them unhealthy. Okay, They'll always be in fear of something because they're not going to be well. They're not going to be stable mentally or emotionally. In large part by and the if you have raw companies. milk, you can't make people sick easily.